Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audiblepodcast.com slash Sorgatron Media. Over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player. I'm getting awesome! You're getting awesome! We're getting awesome! Yeah, that's what I said now! It's the awesome cast. Sorg here again. It's episode fifty-eight, and uh, and we're doing awesome things. With me, you can see right behind me, my trusted sidekick for the awesome is Rob Dagocreta. He's on the wrong computer. He's behind me. <laughs> he's behind me because I forgot to switch what computer he's on. But we'll do that now. Oh, um, yeah. How you doing, Rob? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I um, I'll say that I celebrated the Fourth of July a little too much last night. Wow. Ooh. And I didn't get arrested, but uh, my stomach hurts quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I have a love for, for Belgian quads, and let's just say that just because it's called a quad doesn't mean you should drink four of them. <laughs> <laughs> good to know, good to know. On a couch, back again after his week off knee surgery is Chachi. Hi, guys. You're like, I like how you're hiding behind your microphone. I like my microphone. It doesn't matter where I put it. It's just out of, it's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this is pretty much... I'm, I'm not trying to cuddle with the guy next to me. I'm just trying to get comfy. Um, I'm trying to huddle with him? No, I'm not no. trying. We don't. There's no reason for us to huddle right now. Okay, got it, got we, it. We, we just met. I don't need to, to bounce any ideas off of him. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, there on the couch beside him is our guest tonight, CEO of Geneva Mars, Charles Kim. How you doing? Good. Nice to be here. Of course, uh, you guys just had out the... Uh, the uh, wow, can we say wildly popular? Zachy the Robot? Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Let's say it. Let's make yeah. news. It's wildly right. popular because yeah. Chachi loves it. So. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I played that game. You played, I, it, you played it for about a half an hour before the show. <laughs> I, I would have beaten it quicker, but uh-huh. the uh, the cut scenes in the, the video, I'm, I'm not sure if you can skip those or not. You, you can. You can? You okay. Can, yeah. Well, I, I let him play because it, it was the first time. So, okay. I mean, I, I'm sure I could beat it in, like, less than five minutes next time. I'm, 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 I'm super smart. Yeah. <laughs> of it has course, nothing to do with the smart, fact that it's a kid's game. Yeah, I'm smarter just, than the average five-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> 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 of course, guys, this is the Awesome Cast. You guys can find us at awesomecast.com. Uh, you can tweet us at uh, awesomecast, or you can email us at contact at awesomecast.com, or phone us at 724-25-ACAST at 724-252-2278. Uh, of course, uh, you can find the show, uh, whatever's convenient for you, on iTunes, Mediafly, the Roku Box, Blip TV, YouTube, and coming soon uh, a few other places i i understand and of course uh we rec- record this every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com if you want to join us in the live chat room please feel free to do that so uh like we mentioned Tra- charles kim can i call can I call you charles can i call you chuck, charles? Charles I call you chuck for short <laughs> <laughs> why not yeah um so uh, tell us you are uh, uh geneva mars is mm-hmm. a recent alpha lab Graduate, graduate this, yes, last, this last cycle. correct, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, please uh, explain to us what uh, G- Geneva Mars is as a company and, and what you guys are doing. Sure. Geneva Mars is a uh, startup. We, we come out of CMU, Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, as you mentioned, we were at Alpha Lab, the uh, local incubator here, here in, um, in Pittsburgh. And we're creating uh, uh, iPad and iPhone apps uh, to teach kids uh, basic STEM skills at science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And our first application, which is out now in the iTunes App Store, is a, uh, which you can see here on the um, on our website, GenevaMars.com, is a interactive cartoon called Zacky the Robot. And it's uh, it's a cartoon. It's interactive. It's about uh, this robot called Zacky, and he leads a team of what are called repair bots, and they go around in their hometown of Robo City. And they fix things that break down, and this happens in every episode. Something breaks down, and through their interactions, the kid, the child that plays with Zacky and his friends, they learn uh, basic engineering skills and other science skills, like uh, concepts like uh, balance, um, uh, uh, pulleys, friction, measurement. And so in each episode, we'll teach the children one of these different topics. And so the first episode, which is... uh, um, the Leaning Tower of Robo City, which you see here, uh, this teaches kids about structural balance. Um, and again, we're 
we're targeting children uh, ages three to five. Um, and this might seem a little a young, you know, young audience to teach about basic engineering skills, but this is actually something that they teach kids in the uh, CMU Children's School, which is actually um, an operating uh, preschool and kindergarten that has actual three, four, five year old children. Um, and it's run by the Carnegie Mellon University Psychology Department. My own son, who's four years old, uh, went to school there. And this is actually something they teach the students there. And so this was, uh, um, this was actually suggested to us, this uh, concept, this, uh, the, the um, subject matter was suggested to us by our educational advisor, who was from the uh, CMU Children's School. Awesome. So that, in a nutshell, that's what we do. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, uh, wh where did um, where did Alpha Lab come come into the equation? I, I, what, I guess the, okay. I guess the question I have is like, of course, Alpha Lab. Uh -huh. For those who don't know, is a local business uh, incubator here right. uh, in, in the Pittsburgh area. Uh -huh. um, and now I know you know from you know submissions and knowing people have submitted, like you have to be at a certain point you submit, and, and it's right. kind of like they help you to get to that next step. Yeah. Where did you guys start off, and and, and how did they help you in that process? Okay. Um, so we actually, I I started. Geneva Mars when I was a student at Tepper, which is a business school at CMU. Okay. Um, I, I recently graduated there with a, with an MBA. And um, I, I started Geneva Mars originally as a company to produce software that would help um, people produce shows or software for kids like this, like Zachy the Robot. And so... Um, I originally applied to Alpha Lab, I think, um, the summer of 2010, mm -hmm. and I didn't get in the first time. And at that time, it was just me and an idea. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't get in that first time, and then I, so I decided to go ahead and just start Geneva Mars on my own. So I raised some funds uh, through friends and family, and I put in some of my own money, um, and I decided at that point to, well to basically change directions because I saw that there was already a lot of great tools out there to allow people to create tools, to create software like this. And I wanted to, I thought that my own, I found that my own passions were actually in creating the content like Zaki. So I changed Geneva Mars into an actual content development uh, company rather than a tool development company. Mm -hmm. So um, I went back to Alpha Lab six months later and applied again, this time as a content creation company. And I got um, this time with a team behind me as well. And I was accepted again. I mean, I was accepted finally into the program. And um, at that point, I actually had a prototype. Um, and I had a more, a better idea of what I wanted to do. And um, at that point, um, uh, with a team behind me and with a better uh, understanding of the marketplace that I, I planned to enter, um, I, I was accepted into Alpha Lab. And by the end of Alpha Lab, I, had, uh, I was able to s actually submit the app into the App Store. That's good. Yeah. So it was, a, it, was, it was a really great program, and it helped to actually, you know, launch the first product. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so is, how long has it been live on the App Store then? Uh, just a little under a month right now. Under the month? Yeah. And uh, we said wildly successful. How, how has it been? You, you, we were talking before, Andy, you said it was more of a soft launch for you guys. It is, yeah. Not a lot, not a lot of a, a push behind it just to see how right. it works out there. So something that, that Alpha Lab um, talks a lot about, the, you know, talks a lot about is to release early and release often. Mm -hmm. And that is because... Um, in the traditional product development cycle for companies, what you usually do is you you know you sit behind closed doors, you know, in a business, and you like you develop your product, and you, um, you you know you guess what your your customers want, mm -hmm. and you kind of you develop your product and you release your product, and you know this is why nine out of ten product launches fail, you so, know, especially in right. the tablet market these days, it seems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I mean, gosh, I mean, Lord knows how many tablets out there have, you know, just gone, gone bye bye, right? Mm -hmm. Except for the iPad. And um, so, Alpha Lab's big, 
the big thing that they teach you there is to release your product as early as possible. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what we tried to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so Zachy the Robot is, um, I mean, we tried to get it as good as possible, mm -hmm. of course. And mm -hmm. so we released it and now we're, we want to see what we can accomplish by, um, you know, how many sales we can get by just, uh, word of mouth, you know, yeah. word of mouth, like minimal, Marketing. One from us. One for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Chachi's been enjoying it. Yeah. Um, you, can you show off a little bit of it for us? Yeah, we got absolutely. a camera set up here absolutely. for you uh, yeah. on our nice, sweet purple pillow uh, <laughs> going on. You still yeah. there, Rob? I just want to make sure. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, just want to make sure you didn't <laughs> drop off. We're having some trouble beforehand here. So, uh, oh, we're actually oh, upside so down. Cool. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. Orientation. Yeah. Orientation's important. Yeah. They'll reject you for that. They, they, will they? Hi, Robo friends. That's what I've heard, yeah. To start this episode, please press the green oh. button. Now, he says this is for like three to five year olds and chachis, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hey, I, okay. I was pretty, pretty good at this. I understand uh, building engineering. Welcome to Robo <laughs> And it's definitely City. the animation's really good on this, really tight on this. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's it's. They go, go and go all day, which means a lot. And the uh, voice acting and everything seems seems really good. Now, now, how, um, this seems like a kind of a broader project than I would expect from like you know I think Alpha Lab. I think people go on a website, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but you got voice actors, animators. You got mu. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. If you you know uh, what you did for music compo composition, or if it was a library or whatnot. But, um, part, part of it, uh, some of it is the library, some of it is original music. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is a lot of elements for producing. I mean, it's just like producing a cartoon, just, you know, it is, on yeah. top of interactive right. elements. Yeah, so so I, I was able to put together a great team. Um, all, most, of, most of them are from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, voice actors from the CMU uh, Drama School, animators and artists from the uh, Art Institute of Pittsburgh. The dog wants to play and, fetch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, uh, he has been playing it. Greetings, Robo City Ultimate Repair. So he just. Hi, Mayor. I have an important assignment for you. So this is um, so this is really an interactive cartoon. So, um, just like uh, a, a lot of children's cartoons, like say Blue's Clues or you know Team Mizumi, a lot of these children's cartoons, they'll they'll you know show you part of the story and then. Um, Make you shout at the TV, right? Exactly. <laughs> and in traditional t in traditional television, it's you know it's only one way communication. Yeah. So we wanted children to be able to actually communicate with the with the uh, characters on screen. So that's that was the whole reason, the impetus for creating an app like this. Okay. It, it so reminded me of a uh, Bob the Builder or Handy Manny type show. Right. Yeah. So we were we were very heavily influenced by those types of shows and um, Blues Clues and uh, it's behind you right exactly. <laughs> so you see here in like one of these interactive puzzles that um, they're strewn throughout all of our episodes. They you know ask the child for input into help helping the repair bots solve these puzzles that are um, that uh, that pop up during each episode. So here the child is asked to help decide which um, shape that will shape to use to help prop up the street lamp um, you know if they choose the choose a circle that's not gonna well we'll see what happens I've noticed the grid oh no yeah. it fell over <laughs> <laughs> silly kids and <laughs> yeah that doesn't work <laughs> Right, so so the grid's supposed to signify that it's a simulation; and it's not real life. Okay. So that they can start over. Um, that was something that was um, that that the educational advisor advised us that kids need to realize that you know real life needs to be separated from the you know from the uh, from the simulations. And, okay. Yeah. So they're not going and trying to prop stuff up with wheels at home. <laughs> Right, exactly. Basically. Yeah, <laughs> and it it was. I mean, it was actually very useful to have. And of course, it was useful to have the educational advisor on board. Because um, mm -hmm. originally we had had stuff like uh, for the choices. We had stuff like um, a, a platypus was one of our choices because we wanted to have like silly, fun things yeah, for yeah, the kids. Yeah. And they said they advised us against that because um, 
well, it's it's bad for the children because it's not it's not based in real reality. Um, for instance, uh, I mean, even though you know these talking you know robots don't <laughs> exist, but they're analogs for actual people. And mm -hmm. having a duck as one of the choices or a platypus for one of the choices really wouldn't have worked. And, like, I, I yeah. wouldn't have a, a platypus in my toolbox to fix exactly, this. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, but if we if you put platypus as a choice, huh? then maybe kids would start carrying around platypuses. They or could, platypus. yeah. You could start a whole right, new right, movement. Right. Yeah, we yeah, exactly. start a new, a new pet movement in the world. Exactly. Where exactly. the platypi <laughs> becomes a popular <laughs> children's pet. Right. Good job, guys. Now, let's go. Okay. So, um, excellent, excellent. Yeah. So um, now, you, you know, being a startup uh, uh -huh. in Pittsburgh, you know, one of the questions is, you know, you always hear that you got to go to L.A., you got to go to New York if you want to start a business kind of thing. Yeah. Now, uh, you you know, you've done the whole CMU Alpha Lab thing. Uh -huh. how's, how's the startup kind of uh, atmosphere here these days? I think this, uh, I think Pittsburgh is an excellent place to do a startup. Mm -hmm. Um there is an enormous amount of support here. The, um, well, first of all, just at CMU, um, you know, I, I came here, I came to Tepper to get an MBA mm -hmm. um, because, you know, Tepper is a great school. Carnegie Mellon is a great school. Um, I came here from Los Angeles with all the intents of you know, coming to Pittsburgh. I do my two years in Pittsburgh, get mm -hmm. my MBA, go back to California, I join a tech company. Mm -hmm. I decided Cause, cause I, that's that's a typical that's thing. That's what you do. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah. I I came here, I fell in love with the city. Mm -hmm. I saw the opportunities here, and I decided to stay because the opportunities here are unparalleled. I I think mm -hmm. just in terms of the opportunities for um, starting up a company, um, this is a great place to raise a kid. I think um, the schools here are. Especially for the really, you know, for the young kids, this, the preschools in this in the area that I live in, I, I live in Shady Side, are just really great. Mm -hmm. um, and like the Children's Museum and just uh, the Carnegie Science Center, just all these children, the facilities for kids are just great here. Um, and uh, uh, just at Carnegie Mellon, the the opportunities to start up a business. Um, and the resources for anyone that wants to start a, a, a business are amazing. Um, and, and that's not just, just for Tepper students. Mm -hmm. um, there is a program at Carnegie Mellon called Project Olympus that is available for any student, undergrad, graduate, PhD student. Um, and they offer uh, office space, um, uh, mentorship, um, advice, you know, anything. And they have these like special programs they bring in experts you know to talk and um it's completely free they don't ask for anything in return except you know um maybe a donation when you come rich and famous later in life <laughs> and it's fantastic but, they, um, but how, how many of them ask for that when you don't i'm sorry i say a lot of them ask for that when you don't yeah yeah right exactly <laughs> exactly yeah um and so um and so we joined project olympus when alpha lab turned us down the first time mm -hmm. um, so that was great um, and they actually did help us get into Alpha Lab by offering us uh, advice on how to apply to Alpha Lab, and um, help, they helped us define our market, play, you know, our market, and um, uh, really. I mean, this might sound kind of, uh, you know, obvious, but they helped us to realize that to run a successful business, it's not about um, making a great product; it's about realizing how to sell that product, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I, 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 cr I credit them with helping us get into Alpha Lab. And then, you know, you move on to Alpha Lab and like Innovation Works and, um, just, uh, through that, those two programs, oh, Innovation, you know, Alpha Lab is a part of Innovation Works. Um, that is just an amazing program that you have for, uh, startups in, in, you know, Pennsylvania or Southwestern Pennsylvania to be more specific. Um, and, uh, and that's open to, you know, everyone outside of Carnegie Mellon. Yeah. And so I think just this area is just fantastic. Um, and specifically for people in my space, 
not MySpace, but in my area in entertainment. <laughs> you gotta watch. Uh, we'll, we'll, you gotta we'll watch get, how you yeah, say yeah, that this yeah. week. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into MySpace later. I think. Did right? you buy MySpace? Yeah. No, no, no. The, I didn't buy MySpace. Although, I, I, I probably could have, right? Exactly. The, the robot's been selling yeah, like hotcakes. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> G- given the valuation of MySpace, right? Um, no, we tried for like forty bucks, and they said no. Oh, did they? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think if you gone up to like forty-five, maybe they might have. <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, if we only knew, <laughs> if we only knew. Yeah, right, man. right. Yeah. It was, cr- uh, anyways, um, <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so the, uh, gosh, where was I? I lo- your your I, vocation. I just, I just, <laughs> <laughs> your vocation. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah. So, so this place is, uh, uh, P- Pittsburgh is an amazing place to, to start a company. Is there any pressure to, to, to go or are you pretty are you guys pretty settled and have a good foothold here that you yeah. can, there's not really any oh, reason? Yeah. So, so, um, I mean, re- resources, if, I mean, I, I know like just getting the people to do something like this, there's a lot of people looking for animation, looking right. for, you know, right. 3d development mm-hmm. kind of jobs. There's gotta be plenty to pick from. Right. So, yeah. So not only is there like great resources and like advisory, um, resources for pe- for, uh, startups, mm-hmm. uh, there's great talent here. You know, CMU developers, uh, the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, which is a great place for artists and designers. Um, you have the uh, 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 UPIT. Um, oh, I have uh, my writer, the, the the head writer for Geneva Mars is, is a master student at UPIT. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we have a game designer uh, and a, a, our educational advisor is from UPIT as well. Um, and, um, and also our, our other educa- educational advisor is also from, uh, the Carnegie Mellon, uh, children's school, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and just the resources are there. And also, um, another great thing about Alpha Lab, which I forgot to mention earlier is that, um, besides the, the office space and the, uh, the, the mentorship and all that, everything else they provide, they, what they do is they get your company ready for follow-up investing investment. Mm-hmm. And uh, which was especially a challenge for us because we're in a space, you know, entertainment, education, edutainment, if you will. That's not really a traditional space. That's which is in a space that's traditionally uh, investor friendly, if you will. Okay. Um, but they they helped us position ourselves ourselves in a in a way that would help us get follow-up investment. And we did, we were able to attract uh, angel investment and we have funding to move on to uh, episode two, which we're in production in now. Nice. So that's great. Nice. Yeah. So there's going to be basically one at a time for the Zaki Robot series, yeah. you guys. Yeah. You're just on that path right now. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. So, so we're, we're, we're on our way. So yeah, we're, we're set here. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so I guess one last question, mm-hmm. like iPad was an easy choice. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind uh, of the only choice you have. It, right it kind of is. It right is, now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we do want to go. T- we do want to move to Android, mm-hmm. um, because I do think that's a promising platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, once it does mature, and um, and because the uh, just the numbers, the sheer numbers of Android devices out there is just yeah. skyrocketing. Okay. Yeah. So this isn't going to be just a tablet sized app. No, it, it's a universal app. It's up. Oh, is it? It's up for uh, iPhone as well. Oh, uh, yep. okay, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's um so, one ninety nine gets you both the iPhone and the iPad version. Nice, nice. I uh, EA is horrible with that. It's just yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Okay, that's why I wait for those uh those holiday sales. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's tremendous. And like we were talking before about like you know this this is kind of the platform for you know kids to have. We're Absolutely, talking about two yeah. year olds playing with iPads. Yeah. Uh, I I think I think you know not only are consoles in uh, you know in trouble because of or you know, or Game Boy or, or mm-hmm. DS or whatever in trouble because of the iPad. It, it's going to be the leapfrogs out there, you know. I mean, it, it's yeah. I mean, granted, it, it's it's more expensive, but I mean, it, I think you're going to see one that price is going to come down mm-hmm. over the years. Um, and and I can see my kid having an iPad at like two and playing these kinds mm-hmm. of games. Yeah. I mean, it, that 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 initial investment versus the couple of bucks a game and that. And yeah, it's an interesting model. I mean, what, what is the pricing? Uh, what was the pricing considerations for you guys? Um, the biggest consideration was substitutes. Okay. And so the major substitute for our product is our uh, other TV shows. Okay. On on that are available on iTunes. So you're competing with like Blues Clues, Blues Clues downloadable right. episodes. Yeah. 
So that's which which are dollar ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. And is there a lot of uh, a lot of people doing the storyline uh, interactive stuff like you're doing? Not not that we've seen. Most yeah. of them are like ebooks or like uh, I mean, there there are a lot of great ebooks out there. A lot of great um, like little puzzle games and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot a lot of ones that my my son enjoys, but no real like interactive TV. Sorry, what are you doing was, over there? I had the Blues Clues theme stuck in my head. <laughs> So he, there you yeah. go. You, you there's the proof. You drew him yeah. away. Yeah, <laughs> from his blue, blues, blues on my iPad. <laughs> I didn't download it. I know. Just singing the song. No, no. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Plus, he had to ask me for the password. So. Yeah, that's yep. true. <laughs> Excellent. Well, if you like to stick around, uh, sure, we got plenty to. of news. I, I think you have some great import okay. on it. So, the first one, we have a user-submitted story here I want to get to real quick. Oh, Capcom. Oh, Capcom is now also on the S list for uh, Chachi. Funky Dung. Funky Dung. Funky. Funky I'm sorry. Submits. Uh, Capcom announces unplayable game is the headline. No, unreplayable. Uh, unreplayable, game. I guess is more accurate. According to this on Slashdot, Resident Evil Mercenaries 3D for the Nintendo 3DS will uh, be an experience that can be completed once <coughs> per customer using a single unwipable slave. Wow. Save slot. Uh, Capcom ensures that a second hand customer gets a second rate experience. If you buy this game used, you will be stuck with the previous owner's program, unable to start the game fresh. So, um, oh, Capcom. We, we've seen a lot of these kind of methods lately between between this and me recently not being able to play my Transformers game. I got on sale on Steam this weekend because I wouldn't contact the CD key. Uh, server, no, that's different. That's, 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 that's well, different. That's 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 one of those attempts at this piracy problem. No, not really. No. No, no. What you experienced and what Capcom is trying to do is two different experiences. Okay, they're they're exp- okay. you are the unfortunate victim of overselling. <laughs> okay, they which, they sold too which many. Which is a problem because they insist on these CD right, keys. Right, but it's not this problem. Okay. This problem is video game cost, uh, companies, companies getting upset at people buying their game, beating their game, and selling that game so to So much that they're sabotaging stores. it for the second hand yeah. stuff. Yeah. Because those companies don't see a cent from the resell. Mm-hmm. Therefore, they feel that people shouldn't be able to sell them. Hey, hey guys. What, hey. Rob? Did you read the update to the article? No. Didn't see there's an update to the article. Yeah, no one sent us that. Capcom uh, made a statement. They said uh, the game's value... This was from their UK branch, but it's assumed that this will uh, apply to the US version as well. But quote-unquote, the game's value at secondhand in the UK is not affected by whether or not the game can have its data reset to the company. Customers in the UK will not experience a reduced secondhand value should they wish to trade in the purchase. Wait, Wait, one more time? Yeah, I'm not really entirely sure what that means. That doesn't make sense. So they're I, they're, yeah, they're yeah. saying that that this what that yeah that doesn't make any sense. It's not affected by whether or not the game can have its data reset. I, I think what they're trying they're being like really shady about it, but okay. something in regards to the idea that if you get this game second hand, you're not going to get screwed over. I, mean, I guess the, the the question is, when you're done playing the game, are, can you start, like, what, you start from a stage select from the beginning or something like that? Yeah. So, I, I guess that that's some more questions that could go along with that. So, anyway. I, I, I think what they're saying is that, like, basically the memory is permanent, and mm-hmm. once you start a game, you can't, I think, until, the idea is until you finish the game, you can't start the game again. Interesting. So, yeah. well, then, then that's a problem, because... I. Mm-hmm. Because if you if you got the game and somebody was halfway through the game, so you start halfway through the game. Yes. As, as a until second-hand you customer. finish it, and it's also if you get the device, if you get the game secondhand, mm-hmm. whatever high score was there before will mm-hmm. still be there. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. So it's still not absolutely clear, but basically Capcom's trying to say, "Hey, hang on a second, it's not going to be there." Yeah, yeah, and, and these are these are games that they're all hardware. These are these are cards. SD yeah. cards that they're on, I think. How much, are, how much are these games? How much do they cost these things? That'd be a good question. That was a question that was brought up before, actually. Hold Nintendo 3DS games. Not like 50 bucks, I mean. 
I think they're like 35 or 40. Because I was going to say, especially if, like, this would make sense to me in, uh, I can't think of something that relates to it, but if it was like a uh, slightly cheaper version or something, where, like, it's like, there is one campaign and that's it. Because obviously, like, I don't know, it, it, it's 40 this bucks. whole idea cheapens the experience in general for me, I think. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there isn't flexibility. Like, you know, we're used to, you, you play Doom back in the day and you decide whether one you, you want to be a uh, complete pansy or uh, the suicidal version, things like that. I feel like this is like a, a one-trick pony. You mm-hmm. can't really choose your own ending. It's just kind of like, that's it. Uh, it is interesting. It is interesting. It's weird. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's weird. I don't think it's terrible, especially if they if they do it the way that I just described it. Uh, it is. Going, that's all wrong, and it was like a really backwards apology. Then yeah, this is not. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's on uh, GameStop as uh, thirty nine ninety nine new and thirty four ninety nine pre owned. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's right. could be an issue. Uh, but anyways. So uh, let's, let's move on. Then. Dumb. Dumb. It's the dumb. <laughs> way to go, Capcom. Uh, so Google Plus. Yeah. We've had a, a nearly a week on it. Well, I guess I had since Thursday myself. Um, what do we think? I like it a lot. You like it a lot? <laughs> it's like, not bad. I mean, it's social media without all the, uh, the farm fill. Well, uh, the thing is, <laughs> that's the like, mafia and <laughs> vampire wars and... So the way that like every social me- network except for um, Bebo and uh, what was that other one? Plurk. I remember Plurk. Yeah. I remember Plurk. We, 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 we had a time on Plurk. I Plurked all the time. Keep it to yourself. On, um, <laughs> on what, Tuesdays when Lost was on? Oh, yeah? We would go on there and start a Lost Plurk, and it would get like 2,000 messages long. It's not still around, right? I don't it's, know. It's, oh, it is. It is still com. around, I'm pretty sure. There is wow. a Plurk.com. Let me see if, uh, if we can You can still have an ICQ account. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. I, don't... I used to remember my number. I can't now. See I, I, had can... a, uh, I had a five-digit number. Ooh. Ooh. What's up? Mine was seven. Yeah, I... seven digits. I want to say mine was 387256. I know... Ooh, uh, yeah. Friend of mine had one three three seven. I think I had one three three seven five. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyways, back to about. Anyways, okay, so anyway, so uh, social media. So funny thing. So you remember when MySpace was like the king of everything, and it was really terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was full of like glitter gifts and things. It was like GeoCities. I compare everything to GeoCities. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, glitter! Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very um, universal. But uh, so then Facebook came out, and you know you know what colors Facebook had? It was white and blue. And you know what you couldn't play? You couldn't play gang wars. You know what you couldn't do? You couldn't customize your profile. My, how the times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> so now the thing so, uh, is that the only reason that Facebook is king is because there's nothing better. How, the reason how, people left MySpace was because Facebook was better because it was cleaner. And yeah, had all not anymore. So now Google Plus will be absolutely popular, and a lot of you say, "Oh, this is better because it's clean and it's not like Facebook." No. The question, really, for the success of Google Plus, I think, well, first off, is if they're really going to depend on Picasso. Because really, guys, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, but also, do they have enough cash flow from ad revenue and the scraping of all this data that you're going to be putting into Google Plus to keep it running without the junk? Hey, guys. Hey guys, yeah. I my my Plurk, Plurk page is still up. Nice. Uh, <laughs> a bunch of stuff from Plurk Pro, Plurk Buddy had a had a technical problem, uh, and I have friend alerts too. So uh, that's pretty impressive. Wow. <laughs> They're, they're loading really awesome. All the little fish and everything. I remember these were so customizable. This is basically supposed to be the answer to Twitter, right? Yeah, it was. It was like Twitter. It was, it was a Twitter RPG, basically. Twitter RPG. Wasn't, uh, wasn't Plurk pre-Twitter? No, no Plurk no, was no. post-Twitter. We were like, oh, Twitter's been around for like a year. Maybe this is the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, it launched in two thousand eight, <laughs> and, and, and we see how that like, goes. Um, uh, my karma's down to zero. That's because you haven't been plurking. Uh, some of those friends, I don't even like some of those people anymore. Uh, anyways, oh, no. that's, been, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. The, Sword the other down. thing that uh, that I could totally see them working into Google Plus, uh, maybe unfortunately, is uh, all of these Chrome app game things that aren't taking. Oh no! What do you mean? So how big's your farm, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. How, how big's your plus farm? Uh. 
<laughs> You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> uh, but do, do you know anybody who's actually using the Chrome App Store? Um, I've, no. I've grabbed like Angry Birds off of it because it was free. I, I mean, I haven't bought anything, but that's how you get extensions now, basically. Anytime I need to download a YouTube video because a client wants it, I go see what the newest extension is on there that they haven't shut down yet. Yeah, but I feel um, like that's definitely like a, a revenue path that they could take. That would <laughs> so, Although I'm gonna start using it. You you think so? Yeah. Well, there's this new app for my G2. Let me pull it up. It's uh Chrome. It's Chrome the phone. Uh, okay, yeah, it's like a sync thing for the browser, right? Yeah, okay. I can uh, toss information back and forth between my my phone and my browser. But that's that's basically an extension. That's that's something that you you would get on Firefox, anything else. Yeah. We're talking. I mean, we're talking about how much is Chrome doing selling like in browser video games? You know, yeah. like, I mean, how- all the stuff that's supporting the the Chrome OS, <laughs> OS, uh, the the really like the idea of having. Um, it's not even a mobile application. It's uh, it's just an in-browser application, a mm-hmm. fully blown application. And of course, uh, not everybody's in gr- uh, Google Plus just yet. Uh, here's what it looks like if you haven't had a chance. Basically, it's it's Facebook. You know, it, it's it's like a very slim. You can down. actually download a user script that will make it look like Facebook. Yeah, that was <laughs> that went up like the next day after I jumped on. It's like, uh, yeah, because we need that. Um, the other, the other thing I've really noticed is that there's like something, there's something engaging about Google Plus. There's mm-hmm. something also because um, <coughs> a guy responsible for designing some of the better early Mac interfaces is the same guy <laughs> that designed Google Plus. Yeah, Andy, Andy Hertzfeld. So um, you get some, of, gave, you get some, some of that cleanliness there, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's super clean and really intuitive, which is nothing we've be, we've been able to say about anything Google has put out in the last and, decade, because they're a company full of engineers, and engineers don't know how to design interfaces. Exactly, Sorry, guys. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, the engineers are all about functionality. They can give a crap yeah, less how it yeah. looks. Mm-hmm. But that's always been a, a huge problem with Google products. But this is like it, it, there's something that makes me want to go to Google Plus and see what's going on and hang out. And like plus one things. And plus one things. Like, I'm compelled to use it. And you can tell because even though this is a limited release, I don't know about you, but this thing's only been out for a week, and my stream is pretty full on Google Plus already. Yeah. Well, that depends. Did you add Ryan, uh, uh, Robert Scoble and uh, Leo Laporte? Because that'll do it. Yeah, I, I yeah. know better. Than to do I, that. I muted them already. Um, I should have known better. But I wanted to make it look full. But now, no, now it's getting to the point. There's another flux of people that were added, uh, like, today. I, I, I'm guessing everybody got back from vacation and turned on invites again. Um, so it's starting to look a lot like my preferred Facebook thing. And, and for those who don't know, the, the big thing about this is, you know, whereas if you post something on Facebook, like you're worried my parents are going to see it, these persons are going to see it, coworkers are going to see it. The, the genius part of it here, I'll, I'll pull up on here. Like you have your circles. I showed off a little bit on the video here. Uh, like, I can just show, like, I want to talk about, like, you know, wrestling stuff. You know, Rob, you're not going to care about wrestling stuff for the most part. So I just hit up my Wrestling Mayhem Show circle, and it'll just go to them. Nobody else can see this. From what I understand, this isn't public in any form. Right. Unless things get reshared and stuff, which is always an issue. But, um, so, I mean, that's, that's The other thing, that's uh, cool. something, uh... Doop, 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 doop. So, uh, if you were in my my Twitter session last year, doop, doop. Uh, I, I referenced the the endless circle jerk that is the internet, uh, which is like, oh no, you unfollowed me. Why would you do that? I'm your best friend. So, if you want to, you can make a circle of like people I hate but don't want to deal with. Now, I'm not clear. Can other people see what circle you put them in? So, if no, I can, in, oh, fantastic. So, they I get can notify that like. Like, if I put you in a circle that is uh, people I want to punch in the face, you just get an email that says that Rob has added you. That's it. <laughs> you don't know it's a good thing or a, a bad thing. So, like, I could have you in a good circle of, like, people I really like or a bad circle, but there's still a point of reference. So what Google is doing is, because I sort of complained about this last week when I said, like, I don't know about the whole putting labels on thing. But in it's almost like in, in creating lines, it simplifies things. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. Like and then, and like, having to put that little bit of thought into it. There's the whole con- contextual thing that we talked about. Like, you're saying with, like, sharing wrestling things with people who are into wrestling and not with people who aren't into wrestling. And then, on top of that, there is, like, you can absolutely have 
friends, uh, really close friends, acquaintances, family, stuff like that, to just like draw your lines and keep your your overwhelming social circle, not just like going to Facebook and you're like, I've got four million friends. And and that's it. And it's so <laughs> easy because I just did it. People I could punch in the face and Chachi's now in there. You. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> hey, hey, want to see something really pretty? What's that? Uh, make a circle or if you have an empty one, delete uh, it. Delete it? Oh, I was delete doing that the circle. other day. Oh, let's get let's get rid of acquaintances. It's the coolest okay, thing ever. Okay, hit delete this circle. Uh-huh. And oh, it, are right. you sure uh, you want to delete the acquaintances? Right. Okay, okay. Oh, it, it drops <laughs> and it rolls away. <laughs> wow! Wow! It's so great. It's little things like that that make it like a pleasure to use. <laughs> it, it sure beats uh, making lists. I mean, I, I attempted to make like the high school friends list, and the you know, like I said, the Mayhem Show, the Awesome Class list, the you know, uh, and, and other you know, other families and everything like that. But it's so hard in Facebook. Somebody adds me as a friend, depending on what device I am, I'm in. I don't know if I have the option to go add them to a list as I go. And have you ever tried going back, and they basically just give you a giant list and of everybody. Tell you what list they're in. I mean, is there even like a people that aren't in a list to find them to determine a list to put them in? Oh, it's terrible. I, I mean, mean it's, it's awful. Th- this is th- and this is exactly the thing. I mean, you get added, you get a little notification. This is the cool thing here is you get this bar is added to all your Google and you know I live in Google anyways. Um, so you know I get I get a notification. I can share something straight from the page. This pops up in Gmail and pops up in uh, in our. Yeah, there's a document for the show. You know, uh, I think it pops up in Calendar and Reader, uh, a few other things. Um, and also with the uh, with the launch of Google Plus, they're slowly rolling out redesigns of all of their services as well. Exactly, I think it look it looks great on the iOS. I love the little kind of flick down Android type thing they do uh, for with the icons at the top. Mm-hmm. When you're and you like, can side swipe between stages in the if you visit it uh, in a browser. There's so much like jQuery and really? awesome Ajax stuff going on there. Tremendous. So this is like and, uh, apparently they've submitted an iOS app, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, uh, speaking of apps, Chachi, you've had the Android app, yeah, so far. Uh, how's that? That's what you've mostly been using it. Uh, I haven't been at a computer, and people keep calling me. I don't know who this is. Um, I haven't been at a computer in a few days. Uh-huh. Uh, well, since last you've week, been, you've been, yeah, because I you've been laid up. So, yeah, every, I've done everything from my phone. Mm. So when I got the Google Plus invite, I signed in, went to the market, or no, I didn't even have to go to the market. I went to the Google Plus website, and they're like, download the app. I'm like, okay. And it was there. And it even installed a handy-dandy little uh, Google Huddle uh, icon for me that takes me straight to my huddles. Now explain the huddle. It's kind of like a, a text message without text texting. It's kind of like... It's a private conversation between you and whoever you invite mm-hmm. that you can bounce ideas or just BS. Which sounds like either BBM, somebody said, or oh, yeah. uh, or like the new iMessage coming up. Yeah, pretty much. Except this is based around groups instead of like just one individual to another individual. So in the Google Plus demo video, they show like five people in a little chat thing like trying to organize a night out. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, is this place open? No, okay, let's go here. Okay, I'll see you there. Now, is that based on circles? Uh, I don't or or so. is it I, I, I grab like I, I I select through it and I hit out I invite Chachi and Rob. <laughs> what, what's up? What's up? <laughs> Rob DM'd me a, a gif. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, <okay. laughs> but uh <laughs> sorry, it's still open in one of my tabs. <laughs> um <laughs> But uh yeah, what were we saying? I don't know, apparently, you were distracted. Well, let's talk about what everybody else is doing. Uh, we have, well, for one, we have uh, Facebook is going to have an announcement on Thursday, which everybody has guessed it's new lists that mimic circles, or Skype's going to take over. Because yes, yeah, well, that's the other thing. Hangout is is the other cool thing going on. And, uh, I haven't been able. I feel like. I have a bunch of people in Google Plus, and I feel kind of lonely because I never see anybody hanging out. I always I, miss yeah, the party. I was hanging out earlier today. I, uh, Friday, I was uh, at my one, the one place, and uh, I hung out with AJ on on it. Um, it crashed once. I know Uncle Crappy was was hanging out uh, Sunday night while his news break was was uh, loading at work. Um, so they're they're around, Rob. You just gotta look for them. Yeah, I look for them. Uh, maybe you're not in their circles. I, I want to get like a little. 
nothing big, but I, I feel like it would be cool if there was a little, uh, a little like tiny, tiny icon, like a five by five pixel wide oh thing that popped God, up in your uh, notification bar. I would say like some of your friends are hanging out right now. Yeah, yeah. I, instead of just showing up in the stream like it usually does. Um, yeah, like you gotta like look for it. I'd rather like be if I'm at a Google service, it'd be nice to have like a little thing that just says, "Hey, somebody's having a party without but you." It's interesting. <laughs> it, it's got a lot of applications. Like uh, I'm wondering what could happen if I, I, I see if it'll run on these computers since they're kind of lower end ones. But you can put like ten people in a room, and instead of them talking over each other, it blocks everybody else, and the dominant one pops up. As the main, uh, it kind of like enforces some etiquette on people if anybody wants to get hurt. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, anyways, it, the, the you know, like I said, Facebook is looking to announce some stuff. Um, your 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 girlfriend Rob uh, tweeted an interesting one today. Um, Pulse Yahoo Pulse. Pulse Yahoo. I'm going to announce. Is apparently is their take on social networking over at Yahoo. Really? Um, is interesting. I feel like there's a whole subset of people who legitimately use Yahoo, and I don't know any of them. Oh, they're there. They're there. I had a coworker that he would send me links from Yahoo News, because that was his front page on his work computer. He still oh. had a Yahoo.com email address. They're there. This is like a weird subculture. The only uh, the only thing I use Yahoo for is to play games. Oh, yeah? That's it. I, I have a Flickr account. And it's not... And it's yeah, I use... Well, I, use yeah, I want Google really to that. buy Flickr so they can kick... Picasso to the curb. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing. It's like I'm on Flickr. I'm already throwing stuff at Facebook. But I want to throw stuff at Picasso too, and iPhoto doesn't use do Picasso. No. Right, and and if you care at all, I was saying this on Twitter the other day. If you care at all about control over your photos, Picasso is not the place to go. Mm-hmm. Although it, they were, right. uh, uh, there is a little bit of a rebrand branding going on. Apparently, they're getting rid of Picasso. It's going to be <laughs> Google Photos. As long as it doesn't suck. Hopefully, there's a redesign around that, right? <laughs> That would be really nice, cause like I stopped, I stopped uploading photos to Facebook because I got really tired. Mm-hmm. That when you upload any any photos to Facebook, you just give them away. I don't mean it in like I mean you know we've talked about the whole freedom of media thing, and and that's fine, whatever. But the idea of just like there's so much I I need to stick to one service. I need to be able to put it on Flickr, and then everything else is happy. And that works. <laughs> if you put it on Facebook, it's locked down. It would be like, oh, hey, look at my thing. Oh, you don't have Facebook. Ah. But still, but still, the, the photos is interesting. Here's here's a look at photo how they're handled handling photos in uh in uh in uh, Google Plus right now. It, oh, and they have the uh, if you're on Android, I think I don't know if it does it on iOS, but they have the the photo stream thing. Yeah. The instant photo thing. Yep. yep. For Google Plus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I turned that off. Yeah, I figured most people. Would. <laughs> So, but it's basically like all the pictures that you take end up to be selectable within the photo thing. So if you're if you're uh, iffy about what kind of pictures you take, oh, it's not you even know. that. You know? <laughs> if you might be a certain senator, or if you're yeah, you might be a certain senator. <laughs> well, if of your an last name, name is Weiner, <laughs> or, uh, and, and, and this is interesting how it pops up in the comments and everything. I mean that that's that's kind of cool. But uh, but again, it's it's a whole another service I have to throw my photos at if I want people to see it. You know. Oh, oh, here's a question for you. Mm. I was thinking about this. So, uh, you know, uh, most of us here are social media professionals in some sense. Mm-hmm. So how long before I'm going to follow, like, um, I don't know. Britney Toyota Spears? Not not celebrities, but companies. Uh, I don't know. How, how long before a client comes to you and says, I want you to set up a Google Plus account for my company? And and I've been shit. wondering about that. Well, as it is now, it again, it's on closed, the it's early, it's for individuals, right? Yeah. That's right, and I don't think it makes sense for for you. Do you think Google Plus, from what you've seen, do you see is this any application for you for your company for your marketing? Well, not yet. No, not yet. I, but obviously I'm not, someday. I'm not sure that right now it's the type of place that these people want to advertise. Right now, it's definitely not because it's closed. Right now, well, I mean, when it when it first opens, I don't think that's the type of place they want to go. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Because I mean, look at how long it took some of these people to get on Twitter, mm-hmm. and now it's flooded. So yeah. now they want to go to Twitter to advertise mm-hmm. because their target market is on Twitter. Well, I think the I think the thing is, um, it's not going to happen until Google Plus becomes just, huge. Just like that's what you think about when you get online. Like mom's right. on Facebook, right? Mom's not on Google Plus yet. 
you know mom mom's probably all still on a yahoo account too to be honest mm-hmm. you know so i mean it's that different like we're all into it now because we're geeks right you know we want that clean <laughs> experience we want to get away from uh, all that stuff that got us from myspace to facebook and now has pushed us away from my uh facebook to uh to, to the plus, this plus service and now we're all clamoring for invites mm-hmm. um and also, you could consider how many how many businesses depend on uh, Google, like Google Apps, to run, say, email for their yeah, business. Yeah, I think so that's, that's the only mm-hmm. thing is well, it no, could be it could easily be like a built in package. Like, exactly. would you like to turn on the Google Plus exactly. for your website that's hosted by Google, so all of your viewers can have a huddle while they're on their website like instead of the it. instead of the guys in the company, the higher ups saying, "Yeah, I want us to be on <laughs> Facebook because I know all my friends are on Facebook. I'm my mom's on Facebook." Versus, oh, well, let's get on Google Plus because well, we have the Gmail in our business anyways, and it's just another switch we turn off. You know, uh, it's definitely something to watch. You know, it's definitely something that, you know, those of us that make a living saying, hey, this is how you need to communicate with people have to look at this as an option, which either is going to be just another hat in there that that's going to be equally as on par with Facebook or Twitter. Or maybe, it, I mean, well, I don't think it's uh, eclipsing Twitter unless they do some really interesting things with Buzz that make it awesome. Um, but were you saying something over there? Well, I definitely wouldn't want to advertise on Google Plus yet, mm-hmm. I mean, not or or ever for that matter. I I, I wouldn't want to uh, advertise on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely would want to explore Google Plus for um, the social aspects. I mean, I definitely mm-hmm. want to. Uh, I mean, that's what I use Facebook for. I, I have exactly the robot Facebook page uh, specifically to you know draw parents in to communicate what Zachy the robot's about, what Geneva, Geneva Mars is about, and if Google Plus you know offers a um, a form for that so that parents can get together so I can communicate with them, you know, what this app is all about then. So know, like um like 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 maybe maybe somewhere down the line we see like you see like a Geneva Mars circle. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean yeah. that that that's the kind of thing mm-hmm. I was thinking. Mm-hmm. And I, I have a few other ideas of how this could apply. Like I right. I have this idea of just like People buying into exclusive circles yeah. could be a thing, and there's something and sparks like, too. There, there could be a sparks. Spark. Yeah, explain sparks because I just started a little bit of experimenting with sparks. Uh, I'm having, I'm honestly I'm having a bit of a hard time differentiating between the two, like like actually describing it. But like I have a cycling spark, and so right now the Tour de France is going on and everything, and and so I have this well it looks like it's just being pulled from google news but i have a stream of information that's dedicated to cycling here i got right here you get the spark section over here i threw pittsburgh wrestling technology news and comics right Mm -hmm. um yeah like i said it looks like it's coming from because i get there's articles from uh kansas city star uh pittsburgh.cbs local which should be kdka uh pittsburghlive.com pittsburgh cbs local bleacher report for the pirates nhl.com so i mean it's it's almost like uh, uh, like a uh, uh, what uh, words RSS filter. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's, instead of uh, subscribing, it's like a it's like a uh, Google News alert that's built into mm-hmm. the service. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So what which like? which could be interesting. And, and everybody says, well, they need to do this, this, and this too for a lot of this. Like like you know, especially with that Hangout stuff. This is one point out, guys. Or you know, or whatever, you know, obviously they're not letting everybody in. There's a reason. There's going to be plenty of stuff to roll out. Remember how limiting Facebook was? That's why we went there. <laughs> and, now, and now look at all the stuff you can do and how much trouble you can get into. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it, it all comes full circle, guys. That's, I, I think that's, that's the gist of it right there. So speaking of coming circle with social media, um, <laughs> coming circle, yes, coming circle. Mm-hmm. Coming circle with plus. Uh, MySpace. Yeah. Uh, so no longer owned by our beloved Rupert Murdoch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> by yeah, an so, equally beloved. <laughs> so Justin Timberlake took this whole uh, uh, social network rule a little too far this time. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. he played a an internet mogul. The creator now, of Napster. Yeah, and now initially. he owns part of MySpace. How did that happen? Um, yeah, yeah. Like, he's the, and I don't know how this makes sense, but he's the creative director. Yeah. That's his official title. Well, that's like Lady Gaga working with Polaroid. Right. You know? I no, mean, it's Kodak. No, it's Polaroid. Is it Kodak? I think it's Polaroid. It's, it's Kodak. I'm pretty sure it's Polaroid. Yeah. It's a photo company. Yeah. It's Polaroid. Anyhow. Either way. Anyhow. 
<laughs> Who cares? Well, MySpace is uh, is big on musicians. It's yeah. a big space for musicians. Right. So I, can, I can see the connection. My, when we were booking shows, when we were doing the music thing, yeah. that's where we lived. Okay. Because yeah. that's well, the go. only place, just like mm-hmm. we talk about people live in Facebook these days, uh-huh. the musicians lived and operated right. in MySpace. Well, that's what it was venues, originally for. Venues mm-hmm. lived and operated and booked through MySpace. Right. It was horrible. And that's what, <laughs> and that's what it was originally for. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't say originally. Originally, it was... Like, Go back Facebook. and read the articles. Really? Go back and read the articles. This was what MySpace was originally for. And okay. then they opened it to everyone because they wanted people to see the musicians mm-hmm. on yeah. MySpace. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. And, and turn to crap because you have Mafia Wars and Vampire <laughs> Wars and <laughs> glitter and badges and... Yeah, that whole open HTML for the design. Oh. Mm, yeah. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. So, it got um, to the point uh, where... Fifty percent of the time, you were going to a .dot com, it redirected to a MySpace page. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That happened to a lot of people. Yeah, I think one of my so old uh, MySpace was uh, sold for a bargain price, a low, low <laughs> bargain barrel price of thirty five million dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was bought for fifty eight million by Rupert Murdoch's was company. Five hundred thirty. Yeah, it was a five hundred something. Five hundred eighty million. Five hundred thirty. Five hundred. Well, they have yeah, a uh, a five hundred seventy five million dollar operating loss. There's so many numbers. Oh, jeez, yeah. that's. <laughs> People aren't happy about this. Yeah, yeah. basically. Um, yeah, uh, five hundred and forty five million dollar short sale is what it was. And uh, okay, in the end. This whole business of owning MySpace for a short period of time cost uh, Murdoch one point three billion dollars. Pocket change, I'm sure, for him. <laughs> Which is it really is because um, News Corp did two point nine billion dollars in profit for the last four quarters and generated two point two billion dollars in free cash flow. Jeez, hmm. geez. So they're they're doing all right. All right, <laughs> they're gonna live otherwise. All right, I, a- I got one last question because I know you've operated with this. We have this in here. Of course, a lot of a lot of feedback. We're uh, Final Cut Pro. I haven't got it yet myself. Oh, hey, uh, I used it to make that video. Yeah, episode. exactly. Apple released an FAQ answering a lot of the questions. Basically, if it's missing, it's coming back soon, um, yes. ish or next big release. Uh, so either way, uh, uh, Rob, like I said, you you got to edit uh, yeah. your sparkler uh, extravaganza video uh, in Final Cut X. Uh, how was the experience? Uh, pretty good. So, funny thing about I've avoided Final Cut like the plague because if you don't have uh, some sort of like easy entry into it, if you're not sitting next to somebody or have some, I, I feel like Final Cut is one of those programs like somebody just walking into Illustrator CS5. It's mm-hmm. kind of intimidating because there's a lot of random things that are, they use a language you don't understand. Hey, remember when you asked me about that Illustrator file the other day? Yeah, that was kind of exactly. <laughs> I don't. Um, but so it's really friendly it is a lot of uh, the backlash initially was that oh this is just iMovie Pro and like when you first open it 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 asks you if you want to import iMovie projects so a lot of people uh, you know said nasty things about it because they said that it was just a pro version of iMovie Mm. but that's a good thing you know why because they already put a lot of thought into developing iMovie so that your grandmother could figure out how to use it (laughs) which means it's an intuitive interface so I was able to put things together and use their samples to kind of well, like figure out my way through the timeline in a way that made sense, and it is super easy. And so, uh, as uh, as Mike and I had discussed on Twitter, I'm pretty sure that aside from the features that at this point they've said, like, look, we're getting to it. This is not the final version. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from that, this is like Windows XP all over again. People hate change, and yeah. Final Cut Pro has not changed in a decade. Or you could say this is a uh, OS X. Of this, yeah, product. absolutely. I mean, people hated OS X when it first came out, mm-hmm. and well, you had to forsake everything you knew about the operating system and all your old programs for the most part, unless you wanted to, you know, do your virtual environment thing, uh, which you can still kind of do. Can you still run a uh, Final Cut Pro Seven right beside this? Um, I think there is. Um, did you see the petition though? The pe- what's the petition? So. In the same way that uh, if anybody is familiar with uh, Quark, you know Quark? Uh, that would uh, explain Quark. <laughs> Quark is a desktop publishing platform. So before the days of uh, Adobe InDesign actually being useful, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, before that was Adobe Publisher, mm-hmm. and then, uh, but beyond that was Quark. Like newspapers use Quark mm-hmm. or Quark Express. And that's the sort of thing where 
you buy a plug-in for Quark, you just spend 10 grand. It's a, it's a big, huge investment. So when the industry slowly moved to InDesign, there's a lot of old houses that are stuck on Quark just because of how much money they spent on it. So in the same vein, a lot of companies invested hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars in making Final Cut Pro-based companies. I'm sort of quoting the, the petition at this point. Uh, these are now threatened by a prosumer-grade product upgrade of Final Cut Pro 7 titled Final Cut Pro X and will likely put several of these companies out of business. The costly process of migrating studio hardware and software is a major burden, especially on studios, studios that have made recent upgrades to support Final Cut Pro. If many had known of the Final Cut Pro X release prior to investigating or investing in expensive hardware and software license, most, if not at all, would have sought alternative solutions. And my response to this is, number one, read the fact. Number two, yeah, you know, a lot of people invested money in steam power before before that didn't work out. So, um, <laughs> well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you don't make your own tools. Yep. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what's happening when people are depending on Twitter uh, to make their business, and then Twitter decides to take it. I mean, it, I mean it's got to be a concern for iOS developers now, too. We see them absorbing a lot of that stuff. You know, thankfully, you know, you're uh -huh. working on a content-based uh, thing over there, you know, but but that's that's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially yeah. when you're when you are depending on a company that is such a you know if if Steve Jobs trips on a corner that corner gets blown up the next day. Mm -hmm. It's this is a game changing company <laughs> and things can change on a day to day basis. So if you're not listening for the herd, mm -hmm. if you don't have your ear to the ground for the decisions that Apple's making and they are your meat and potatoes, then you're basically asking to have your head cut. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, this this is this really feels like to me, uh, being somebody that 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 worked in a, a, a video house that moved from Premiere Pro to to the Mac based and Final Cut. We went through three versions of Final Cut, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, the entire studio, what, Studio One, Two, and Three, um, which would be Final Cut Five, Six, and Seven. And uh, and I'm curious how they're going to do that. That I'm curious how they're going to do that. And uh, it really feels like the the, the pros are, are mad because, uh, uh, yeah, let's say it's more accessible to you. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. it, it really feels like this release. You know, not not touching it myself gets around the process of making movies that make sense and lets you just kind of create. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm which is, it. I mean, it's why the iPad is so great because, mm -hmm. and and why these touch interfaces that we're getting used to are so great because they take the. I mean, a mouse and a keyboard are a barrier to entry when all you want to do is manipulate content. Mm -hmm. And it's so one the of those easier it's, you can make that, the better it's, it is. It's, 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 you know, the video guys are getting mad because it's, it's become a very commoditized environment that anybody can pick up a camera and do it, and they're getting so much cheaper, and we're doing all this stuff online, and it's so much cheaper and more accessible. Well, guess what, guys? Your power tool just got more cheaper and uh, accessible to everybody else. And yeah, if yeah. You're grandma the wants to edit her cat videos. <laughs> right? and, well, and then the, the question is, so you can feel cool and have your expensive, complicated tool that that nobody else can understand and make your movies the way you want to do it. You're going to jump to Avid or Premiere. Uh, Premiere is doing a half price sale on their stuff. Or you could learn a tool that will probably make your process easier in the long run. And you can accept that the um, and, the competition just got really hot. Exactly. That's what the exactly. Um, and so I think that's more interesting. I I don't know. I, I think I think the the idea with this is uh, I'm not changing all my main projects over it. All my main clients will not be moving from Final Cut Seven, but I'm going to start editing like this show on Final Cut X Ten, whatever. I hate when they do this X thing. I don't know. You know? Do I say OS X? Do I say OS Ten? What what is it? We jumped from seven to ten. It's like it's like Windows. You know, with the seven's the eighth version. What the hell? Um, Anyways, um, but but I, I, I'll be uh, getting my hands on that, starting to edit these shows, and I'll have some input hopefully uh, very soon on that. So, well, guys, we got to get out of here so we can go talk about some wrestling. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks again, Charles Kim, GenevaMars.com. What's what, what's coming up? Should we look for more from you guys coming up? Yeah, what, we're, what's the prospect for episode um, two? Episode two in a few months. Okay, and. Uh, uh, we're not just doing episodes. We are um, looking at other, uh, like, smaller games and stuff for kids. Excellent. Um, so be on the lookout that's, for more products. That's up at GenevaMars.com. That's correct. Excellent. Yeah. Chachi? Um, Unsung Episode 5 is up on PittsburghOnVideo.org. Woo! Um, and 
I successfully made it the most watched video on the site in less than 12 hours. Well, you should qualify not by you watching it 20 right. times. No, I, <laughs> okay. I, I sent out a tweet telling people to help bump it to the number one watch site or video nice. on the site nice. and it happened. And that's now, it's going to be premiering depending on when you're watching it. Right. Um, uh, watching tomorrow this, night. Which will be Wednesday night, July 6th. Yes. Um, at 9.30 on Channel 21 on Comcast and I forget what it is on Verizon. It's but, uh, PCTV yeah, uh, PC 21, TV. whatever that number is on each, it's, it depends. Yeah, well, so. it is actually 21 on Comcast. Okay. I think it's uh, PCTV21.org. And uh, check there if you want to check schedule, because yep. I know they have they have the first four episodes over there, and, right. and they'll be adding them to the schedule soon. Right. So, and yep. Chachi says .net? Yep. And you'll be returning to your vidcast this week. Yes. Or I'll make you do it again. You'll make me do it again? Yeah. Is, did, I just, did, did I just inherit another show? No. <laughs> Rob, what's going on with you? Uh, you blowing stuff up like, this weekend too? The, the, uh, the what? <laughs> What's happening? Are you blowing stuff up this weekend as well? Uh, no, I'm not. I uh, I might try and find some closeout sales and stock up for next year. Excellent. Uh, if anybody um, wants to see the the video thing, it's on my Google Plus stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. Uh, uh, how can everybody? Should, uh, how can everybody else see that? Yeah. It's uh, it's on my Twitter and my uh, Vimeo account and my uh, Facebook probably and my Tumblr. Yeah, uh, but uh, otherwise we should probably mention that PodCampy thing. Oh, PodCampy thing. Yeah, PodCampPittsburgh.com. The website's up. So. Yay! Because I did my job. Do we have uh, official dates for that yet? Is that uh, I don't know if they've signed the paperwork on it yet. People can no. expect it in September um, if all goes well. Okay. Mid September, Friday. They're announcing it. Is it Friday? I believe so. All right, that might spoil. I it. believe so. <laughs> All so, right, then I might have spoiled. But it's just clear September. Cross it off and put the pod whole month. Camp over. Yes. It's, it's going to be just camp. Pod camp Pittsburgh month. Camp, yes, camp. Bring your sleeping bag and your tents. Yes, we're going to camp your at the Point media. Park. And uh, your social media. It's a big festival. Yeah, we um, can't but, announce that either. Go. What? No, I said at Point Park. Yeah, we can't announce that either. No, at the park. Oh God! <laughs> Chachi, shut it off. He was trying right, to say, "Shut off! We were shut it off!" Say, right I, I don't, fountain. I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you anymore. All right, guys. Again, we record this every Tuesday, uh, seven p.m. Not next live. week. This Trump show's been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I am canceling this show. Contact that awesomecast. No, you're or fired. Seven two four two five. You're eight. fired. Seven two four two five two 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 seven eight. Get out of my studio. <laughs> Your studio. It is now. All right, thanks, thanks everybody. Uh, thanks to the awesome uh, uh, chat room. Uh, have fired. an awesome week. Sick. Why the hell are you on an iPad? Did you have chicken well, I was, for lunch? Because I seem to have like really horrible luck with uh, Macs and Skype. Like it doesn't work at all ever. So you thought an iPad and Skype would be better luck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna. Because you sound, you sound really terrible. Do I? You do. Because, because, because I'm on an iPad. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you sound really. Is this bad. is this gonna be? Are you gonna be cool? Um, I think I might. I might. Well, I I was also having problems with my laptop too. I've I've had like the worst last twenty minutes. I lost my microphone, or my my headphones, oh. and I looked through every pair of pants I own, and then they were like, I don't even remember where they were. Oh, they were in the the fucking bag that I have. Oh, I'm I, oh, I'm gonna kill something. I really am. Uh, that looks really nice, by the way. I right okay. yeah my laptop doesn't have network right now because it's a firewall thing at work and I had to change oh, my no. settings so now I'm trying to fix that oh, such a nice. like no fuck you I don't like DHCP <laughs> so <laughs> you're such a whiner this is horrible hey, Rob. life is too hard Rob you yeah. can't swear anymore <laughs>